is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. I am your host, Heidi, and I am joined by the very special guest, Stacy. Hello. Stacy is a wonderful uh, former GSMC podcast host. I am very happy to have her. Uh, and we are going to be going through some strange stories. The first one starts um, kind of similar to many of these weird news stories start with a Florida man. Oh, yes. Classic Florida. Um, another Florida man. Uh, had threatened to kill his neighbors with kindness, which doesn't sound that weird until you find out that kindness is the name of his machete, which also he named his machete. That's also weird. I mean, if it's a very special machete to you. That's true. Your one and only machete. <laughs> also, just the fact that there's the character machete who's named machete and now my brain's Ooh. off on a totally different tangent. That's so true. That's not... All right. Not him, but a real machete, a knife. Uh, this, and so what happened is a Florida man uh, allegedly threatened to kill his neighbor. And um, he's 30 years old, suspect's name, uh, Brian Stewart. And it began when two of Stewart's neighbors went to his house. They were concerned because they had heard yelling and banging from the, ho- from the home all day. Uh, Stewart came out of the house with an armed raise holding the machete. And it had the words kindness written on it. Like a name tag, really. Okay. And um, one of the neighbors stepped in front of the other to block the blade, and then he suffered a half-inch cut on his left hand. So cut by kindness. So this guy wasn't even just you know standing there gesturingly wildly. He actually no. tried to hurt these people. Yep. Yep. Wow. Which is so frightening. I mean, don't go to your neighbor's house. They might have a machete and be waiting to cut you. Who knows? I mean, in Florida, maybe. That's true classic florida um the sheriff's department was called and deputies arrived and they arrested stewart they said that um stewart's breath smelled of alcohol and he had to be stunned with a taser before he was put inside the patrol car which is crazy he was really mad uh police said he also had to be hobbled after kicking inside the car and banging his head so i assume he was like handcuffed and his legs were probably handcuffed yeah yeah he was because there's a his mugshot he has a big bruise on his head or like a like a red mark. Right. So he was probably trying to fight his way out. Wow. Um, he was booked at the jail on charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without the intent to kill and aggravated battery. And he remains uh, behind bars on a $10,000 bail. Well, good. At least, you know, hopefully time to sober up. When I first saw the story and you're like, kill him with kindness, I was like, this sounds like the title of a cozy mystery set in like Georgia or something. Oh, yeah. Where they would like actually kill you with kindness somehow. I could see that. Yeah. But uh, Machete named kindness. Like this is like the slightly crazy Florida version of Beyonce's bat being named hot sauce. <laughs> it's like I don't I still don't fully understand because hot sauce <laughs> in your bag. But then the bat is hot. I don't I, I like that song, but I don't get it. But I would so prefer that, even though you're smashing up my car, over yep. the machete named Kindness. Yeah, this is terrifying. That's just a horrible nightmare story. <laughs> Again, it sounds like something that the character Machete, a movie, would have someone, you know, brandishing a machete, yep. trying to kill you with kindness. That's yep. just, that, that's that sort of thing. That'd be pretty good for, for actually, for the Machete movie. Right? Yeah. Get on that, whoever oh, <laughs> makes God. those Robert Rodriguez or whoever. Um, yeah. Ugh. Okay. On to a cozier story. This one is was this cozier. I think this is cozier. Um, this is about Costco. They are selling a 27 pound tub of macaroni and cheese. I think this is cozier. Cozy up with your giant bucket of mac and cheese. It'll last you 20 years. See, that's apparently. the problem. It's not the 27 pound tub of macaroni and cheese because that could be like a cozy, you know, night together with friends. <laughs> it's the fact that this tub lasts 20 years that I'm just like, no, 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 no. I mean, who knows? Maybe Easy Mac lasts for 20 years. I mean, I, it probably does, but <laughs> I don't want to think about that for the mac and cheese I eat. It's it like- sounds great. Um, 
the warehouse store Costco. They are selling this twenty seven pounds, um, and it is in a big six gallon mop bucket. Basically, you can buy it uh, for eighty nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and you get one hundred and eighty servings of Chef's Banquet macaroni and cheese. The company said it will remain edible for up to twenty years, just in case. Um, also, I have to let you down that despite the image of like the twenty seven pounds of just creamy wonderful cheesy macaroni and cheese just flowing straight from the bucket um it's more like individual servings of noodles and cheese and they're all individually packaged inside the bucket which is slightly better yeah well it, that's probably why it lasts longer you're not just opening it up and taking a spoon straight to it <laughs> i mean i'm still concerned about any cheese that lasts 20 years but i mean that's not cheese at that point right it's really not yeah <laughs> but i get i get it i get what yeah. it's like because you know this is sort of survival rations or whatever and yeah oh yeah you don't just want to eat like oatmeal and protein bars you do kind of at times you want that home feel of macaroni i get it yeah not saying i want it but i get it that could be a good like white elephant gift (laughs) well it's 89 dollars maybe not but also why uh, here 20 years worth of mac and cheese (laughs) you never know (laughs) i mean that's a heavy white elephant gift that's white elephant, right? The game you're exchanging gifts yes. and they but can usually, be funny gifts. I mean, I've never seen it that heavy. I've seen it with smaller things and the biggest would be like, you know, a couple of bottles of wine or some sort of decorative thing. But 27 pounds worth of 20 years lasting non-cheese is a very <laughs> interesting white elephant gift. Just saying you can do it and you would certainly be the talk of that party. Yep. But I'm not sure you'd necessarily be appreciated or asked back to another one. I went to a, a white elephant exchange where someone brought an enema or um, okay. I've seen a goldfish exchanged. I've um, seen, yeah, I've seen that too. I've seen, uh, oh, one time a potato, someone just a raw potato or, um, oh, when I was in college, someone for White Elephant gave uh, salt and pepper shakers from our dining commons. They stole them off the table. <laughs> I've definitely done that at college where there were gift exchanges of, you know, hey, this belongs to the, you yeah. know, the services, yeah. <laughs> the school services. Yep. Like, that looks awfully like the ones down. Yeah. Yeah, it yep, is. It is. <laughs> also, um, if you're looking to buy this item, according to the Costco website, it is currently out of stock. So hopefully they're bringing it back in stock because a lot of people wanted it. So I don't know. Doomsday preppers. If you're out there and you're like, I really need this mac and cheese right now. Look for the person who is stockpiling stuff in their basement. They might have it. Except if they're a real true prepper, you shouldn't notice that they're stockpiling stuff. They should be all like, you know, secretive and small things at a time and not let me go out and go to Costco and buy every preppy (laughs) thing you could possibly not preppy prepping (laughs) preppy would be something else every prepping thing you could possibly think of in all the different tubs of rations you that kind of screams prepper and then people are like oh hey that that neighbor is the one to hit up when things go bad we need to break (laughs) into that house yeah that's true unless they're nice and they invite you in when the zombie apocalypse starts who knows they have to first check you're not a zombie though oh that's true I do like this though for prepping that it's not just like boring food because you'd kind of be like you know what I, i'm gonna go join the zombies i can't do this anymore brain sounds like a nice difference it's like packaged like, mac and cheese right or these stupid or bars oatmeal. that aren't chocolate yep <laughs> it's like yep. i would get so sick of that so i like the idea that it's now like how can we have this sort of assortment of prep food for the you know inevitable zombie apocalypse or whatever but yet there are some things some things can last forever like honey if it's packaged right can True. literally last like forever cheese is probably not supposed to be one of them and so any cheese that can last that long is not real cheese and i'm like you're already ruining my you know it's already the apocalypse i want real cheese for my mac and cheese or as like as close to real cheese as i can get even if i do like do crafty the mac so i mean those are things that you can only wish for in the middle of the doomsday apocalypse i'm just um, saying for my apocalypse i have standards that's all i'm saying <laughs> that's good of you that's good of you um also i will say though the brand chef's banquet does not sound super trustworthy um that just screams to me like 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 really bad graphic organ like graphic advertisements like like they're i don't mean grab mm, that went badly i mean like they're like whoever designed their logo i feel like it wouldn't be a good logo okay and like i just like that scream is like bad fake cheese to me like cheese whiz cheese you know 
Well, now you're just talking about like strange graphic images and the thing is <laughs> Chef's Banquet. When we're talking about a zombie apocalypse, and I'm now just picturing like, what would a Chef's Banquet at a zombie apocalypse be like? Like, here are the you know sautéed brains <laughs> with a 27 pound tub of really graphic mac and cheese. Right, exactly. And here are the you know fresh cut lady fingers and all these wonderful oh. like Adam's Family puns. My brain's now gone off on. Thank oh. you for that. Yep. I could see that. Well, now I'm thinking it too. <laughs> We've gone in the wrong direction. We really have. <laughs> um, we should take a break. <laughs> yes. We'll take a break and then we'll be right back and we're going to keep talking about some more weird news. The next one I am excited for. A hint, it involves a cardboard cutout police deputies to fight crime. I'm so excited. <laughs> so uh, hang tight. We'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. We are continuing to talk about some strange news stories, and we are going from uh, giant tubs of macaroni and cheese to a sheriff who is using cardboard cutout deputies to fight crime, Uh, (laughs) which sounds great. Um, According to the Williamson County Sheriff, whose name is Robert Chody, he is uh, partnering deputies with cardboard cutouts to deter motorists from speeding. Uh, The sheriff has tweeted a video this week showing one of these fake deputies, and the deputy is standing there pointing a radar gun at oncoming traffic. So wait, the deputy is like, it's not like a a cutout in the car? No, it's just standing there. Okay. Which seems way less probable, but... Yeah. And also, like, less likely to be believed since I can more easily see when it's outside the car, it's not a real person. Yep. Okay. Yep, you would think. Um, but according to the sheriff, it is a creative way to solve a problem without really working, <laughs> without really working the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's true that you're, sure. yeah, you went for a cheaper route. Um, and he continued to say when you're going 20 or 30 miles per hour, you see the silhouette, you're immediately breaking and slowing down. Um, I guess. Well, and this reminds me, I think it's. I want to say it's Super Troopers. It's the beginning of some silly cop comedy mm-hmm. where the guy puts like a mannequin in the cop in the front seat of the car and goes off fishing, but it's still a cop in a car, so the people like slow down. And I'm like, I bet this probably does actually work, but you would think you'd at least want to hide a little the the fakeness. Yep. I mean, like he said, he's not really working the problem. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna put this cardboard here, and we're gonna go off and play canasta. We'll be back. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, (laughs) He said that uh, while the cardboard deputies are not going to be filling out any quotas, they do appear to be deterring speeders. Uh, He has recently tested them in school zones with real deputies who were stationed nearby. And he said, we didn't get one speeder. All these people were breaking before they got to the cutout or as they were approaching the cutout. Although I do feel like if I saw that, I would immediately, I would like, pass the cutout and then just speed up out of spite well or, or like i'd you know be rubbernecking and be like wait was that a real person and possibly cause an accident oh that's like, true co- co- not not a cop cop not a, what was that yep i could see that i would be stopping to be like what the heck yeah it's like at least take you know like an old car you don't need and put it somewhere so yeah. that you know where people where the car normally sits to deter speeders right and then you don't need anything and we only see the car we're good i think that would do the same problem maybe they were short on cars that's possible yeah cutouts would be cheaper though who makes cutouts of cops like I don't know what is the company and what do you normally make these for the I'm, same people who make the elvis cutouts i'm hoping it's not for like sheriff deputies who are short of people <laughs> like sheriff departments that oh we don't have enough officers let's just put out cutouts 
Also, this cutout is not just like the silhouette. It's like a full, it looks like a sticker. Like it's a full print. Like they just took a picture of someone. Okay. So it's not even just like one color. It, you, if you got. I would hope, I would hope it wouldn't be one color. That would not be believable at all. Yeah. I mean, so from afar, you're like, maybe that's someone. I don't know. Anyway, apparently it's working for them. So good on you. <laughs> but I feel this is going to be like the people version of those owls that they put on buildings. Oh, to, like the yeah. trip pigeons, And then the pigeons get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't look like scarecrows. It doesn't do anything anymore. They just start hanging out with the cutout. They'd be like, oh, I know the cutout's going to be at this corner from whatever to whatever. So it's fine. I can speed. Yep. This is I always a cutout know. covered corner. We're good. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Um, also, another story. This is not about police now. This is about a firefighter, so kind of related. Uh, But it is for a much uh, happier story. A firefighter had faked a fire at his own house so that he could propose to his girlfriend. Uh, I mean, okay, yeah, fine, proposal, happy, but I'm I'm starting to worry about, like, our public services people. True. What are you doing? Um, This all happened in November. And uh, apparently, just as this couple was preparing to host a holiday party, so man, talk about a stressful time already, um, for some reason, uh, Zach Steele thought that it would be funny, unbeknownst to Madison Raddick, and they are the happy couple, he decided to plant six remote-operated smoke machines in their attic before going out to pick up last-minute groceries. Again, they're preparing for the holiday, so he's like, I'm just going to go pick up some quick groceries and left the house. Uh, uh, he said, originally, I got one smoke machine. I went to test it, and there was barely any smoke, so one was not going to work. So I had to get more smoke machines, and he got six. Right, that's a little too many. It's a little overkill, but yes. he said it created a lot of smoke, which I can imagine is just like spewing out of the house. Uh, and it sent, uh, obviously, it sent his fiance Madison, into a panic, which I can imagine. Yes. Uh, when the prank started, though, her mom, Madison's mom, was in on the prank, and she faked a call to 911, which gave the signal uh, for Zach to then come in with some of his firefighter buddies, and they came in in, like, full rescue gear. Uh, Madison didn't know what was going on at first, and this is a quote from her. She said, I was so scared, and I honestly could not sort through my emotions enough to completely comprehend what was happening. Then Zach Steele took off his oxygen mask, and she saw his face. She calmed down and then realized what was happening, okay. <laughs> which I'm sure in the back of her head, she's like, of course you would do this. You would. Yeah. <laughs> um, the proposal was captured on body cam footage, of course, because he's a firefighter. Um, and apparently it brought on the waterworks. She started crying. So that's sweet. Um, she, he, Zach got down on one knee and uh, Madison got emotional. She started crying, but she was super excited. And she said that it was truly the best, most indescribable moment of my life. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of crazy well, things yeah. happening at once. You almost thought your house was burning down. <laughs> See, I, have, I have two concerns about this. Mm-hmm. One, I feel like this is misuse of taxpayer. Why do you have the body cam on? Like, <laughs> I know you're supposed to be trying to make it look real and all that. I'm going to assume you also took like a fire truck when you mm-hmm. came in on this mm-hmm. thing. But I mean, I'm hoping... I'm hoping actually just most towns are like, hey, it's a slow enough fire day that you can have a fire truck. We're good. But right. at the same time, why do you have the body cam on? But then B, my concern would have been, never mind the mom who's in on the prank. What if one of the neighbors called 911? Yes. Very like, true. They don't know unless you told the whole neighborhood, hey, I'm going to propose to my girlfriend on this day. So if you see smoke, it's OK. That's the plan. Because and I've had this happen where, you know, it's one fire and you call 911. And like, yeah, we know people have called about it. It's like. <laughs> It's not just a one person called 911 for these things. They don't know anyone else's call, so they call themselves. It's like, that could easily have been, like, we have, you know, a real fire crew out there trying to fight a fake fire. And then it's like, oh, yeah, that. I mean, hopefully he told the fire department, so when they got calls. I guess. Maybe, I mean, although probably the calls would go to other neighboring towns. I don't know. I mean, and it. That feels a bit like too close to sort of boy who cried wolf. Of like, <laughs> oh, yeah, the fire is in whatever neighborhood. Oh, we know that's Zach's neighborhood. And then it's like, no, no, no. Different house. Different house. There's true. a real fire. You don't. True. You should not make fake calls to firefighters or police because that takes away resources from real crimes and real fires. So please be careful. If you're doing a fire proposal, um, maybe don't, you know. <laughs> just maybe don't. Yeah. Maybe just don't. I, I'd be one of like. 
note to future people who would want to propose to me, do not do any sort of surprise in which in reality I would might possibly want to like call emergency services yep. or think someone was dying. Agreed. I will not think fondly of you afterwards. Nope. I may hit you and or you know, we might really need to call 911 for a different reason yep. afterwards. Like that I am not good with surprises like that. If it could actually be a real emergency, no. No, no. 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 Not wise. Would not suggest. Um also, apparently, they are, uh, of course, she said yes, and um, they'll be getting married on March 30th. So Good, good for them. Congrats. Glad it definitely worked out in the situation. Not going to say it was the best planned surprise. Oh, I'd be terrified. Terrified, for sure. Um, yeah, I ugh, don't do that. I don't want to do the, like, where people propose at baseball games, you know? I wouldn't want that, and I wouldn't want a fake fire. See, yeah, I wouldn't want the, I'd prefer the public one over the fake emergency one. Just because, hey, don't don't give me a heart attack of something that could really happen. Like, I'd really freak out if, you know, you were pretending to be dying or something. It's like, yeah. please, no, no. Also, I'm glad he told her mom. Yeah. Because my mom would totally freak out, understandably so. And then it'd be just the two of us, like, completely, like, crazy in a house, which is, like, right. spewing smoke from six smoke machines. Right. And that's the other thing. Like, if you, again, to, to cover the basis of let's not have the neighbors call... 911. One wasn't good enough, so you went to six. That seems a bit too much. I know. But couldn't you actually just have it be one where it's like, oh, there's smoke coming from somewhere in the house. We don't know where. Let's all just get out the house to be safe and all kind of call 911. And none of the neighbors have any clue what's going on, and so they don't call 911. Like, it actually seems better to have less smoke than more smoke because more smoke could easily just get out of hand. Oh, yeah. Also, smoke machines, like, make everything smell bad. So I feel like all their furniture would smell really bad Do afterwards. they really? Yeah. They oh. make, like, and, like, the carpet and everything. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> would not suggest. So this this all worked out well, possibly despite <laughs> what you might expect. I mean, it did end well, so that's good. And then hopefully he immediately turned off the smoke machine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we're going to take another break and then uh, we will come back and finish up with our weird news stories. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News. We are continuing talking about some strange and weird news stories. We are going to one that is weird, also very funny. At least I I chuckled when I read it. (laughs) Um, And this story takes place in Paris. It is specifically about Paris's first nude restaurant, which is unfortunately closing for lack of business. I'm so sorry. Also, right. like, I feel like Paris, I feel like that might actually do well there, you know? See, and I think that's the idea and why it got open in the first place. It's like, oh, it's Paris, the French, nude beaches, so nude restaurant, of course. Yeah, although I'm not surprised, though, the idea of eating in the nude with a lot of other people probably did not sound very appetizing. See, when this first came out, I thought it was like the waiters were nude when I first started. And I was like, okay, I can see why someone would throw that. But no, wait, the people eating are, why? As long as the chefs aren't nude. I don't know. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely not. The people definitely cooking. health code violation. Right. Um, <laughs> so the uh, first nude restaurant has closed just a year after opening. It is called Oh Natural. Of course it is. <laughs> uh, of course. Um, it was opened in December of 2017. And um, again, it sounded like an easy sell. Instead of dressing up, diners would dress down to their birthday suits different kind of suits than normal for restaurants um uh and once naked the customers could enjoy a three-course dinner with foie gras lobster snails lamb or scallops 
and it was for 58 bucks. So not bad. Not bad, you know. Uh, especially not bad because you don't have any pockets. You can't carry in your wallet, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's really against the idea of no shirt, no shoes, no service. Right. Also, all of the restaurant personnel were clothed, which is better. I feel like that would... I don't know. I feel like I would be almost worse to go to one where all the servers were naked, maybe. Well, again, so long as the chefs are clothed. True. I feel like either way is equal after yeah. that. But the people cooking need to be clothed. Yeah. And as long as they wipe down the seats really well after everyone comes in, uh-huh. it'd be fine. Also, I'm assuming people would go to the restaurant and then undress. They wouldn't just show up nude because you'd have to be like a really committed nudist. See, I'm now just picturing a bunch of people being like those streakers in the Burberry coats. Just oh, yeah. walking down the street. Just like into a the, pilgrimage of Just nudists. a group of people in Burberry coats and come in and take off your coat and that's all you've got. Yep. Take off your shoes. Yep. I, I would assume they'd also take off. I don't know if you have to be considered. I don't have to take off your shoes I, to be considered I don't think you nude. would because it would have to be a certain type of restaurant where like, you know, you sit almost cross-legged where so then you expect people to take off their shoes like in certain oh. Asian restaurants. But hmm. if you're walking into like a regular restaurant where you sit at like a seated upright table, yeah. I think that might also be a health code violation to then be barefooted. So, oh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, it's yeah. I don't know how those laws work. True. Um, despite getting a lot of attention, apparently worldwide, uh, it, the restaurant is going bust. And the owners, Mike and Stephanie Sada, posted a statement on its website announcing that the uh, the bistro would close for good on February 16th. And this is a quote from them. It said, thank you for having participated in this adventure by coming to dine at Au Naturel. Uh, we will only remember the good times, meeting beautiful people and customers who are delighted to share exceptional moments. That's sweet. See, Au Naturel feels almost like it should be like a beach bar at a nudist oh. beach. Like that feels, and I'm, I'm assuming that some nudist beach somewhere must have some sort of like just either bar or stand or something on the beach. Mm -hmm. So those people are used to, you know, serving people who are naked. But a nice, fancy sit-down restaurant in the middle of not a nudist beach seems a little odd. Yeah, I could see, like, there being a nudist beach beach bar. That would be a probably good idea. Um, Yeah, someone would probably capitalize off of that. (laughs) The owner should. They'd just be like, okay, so we we don't do it in the city. We just do it in the beach. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, So I'm sorry, I'm natural. I... Wish uh, the owners the best. Uh, our next story, this is a end of Christmas tale. It's sort of like the after Christmas gift that you never wanted. And it's not just right. like the extra weight. It's just worse. Uh, this is about over a hundred praying mantises that took over a woman's home after she bought a bug infested Christmas tree. Yeah. That's a nightmare. See, and I had this happen, though. Thankfully, they didn't take over the home. But we discovered oh. after like the day after Christmas that our Christmas tree had a bunch of spiders in it. Oh, God. And it was a hassle just getting it out the house because none of us wanted to touch it. Oh, that's horrifying. And we were living in apartments at the time, so we had to drag it down a bit towards the dumpster. And we're just like, we don't want to touch it. So we like crazy sprayed it with bug spray oh. and put on like gardening gloves and dragged it out the house. And, and then, then you have to like think about the fact that you carried it in there. Well, and it was there for several weeks. Like, oh. where did these spiders, how long have the spiders been there? Oh. Were you all just like not hatched yet? Please not have been hatched oh. yet. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That sounds fun. awful. Um, this happened to a woman in Springfield, uh, Molly Cruise, Cruise, uh, and she experienced more than a hundred prey mantises. They infested her home <sighs> after hatching from an egg case hidden in her Christmas tree. Oh, that's horrible. Uh. Um, it is now possible that the mantises are moving from not just her living room or wherever it is to her bedroom, and it's a scenario that she never wanted to consider. <laughs> Well, and it's so interesting because she's a veterinarian. Yep. And she's handling this much better than me, which would be the, okay, fumigate right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, she's quoted saying, I don't want to think about that. Uh, it's possible. I don't want to know, as she considers them moving into her place of sleeping. Uh, and she said, well, okay, so apparently she is, as you said, Stacey, much kinder than I would be. Because she's not just vacuuming up the bugs. She's trying to avoid that by scooping them with an envelope and storing them in a shoebox, which is, like, still in her house. This is, like, 200% nicer than me because it yeah. would take me, like, a major amount of, okay, I really care for all living things mm-hmm. ever, even just to get to the scooping them up with an envelope. Mm-hmm. But then that would immediately be 
dump it outside. Oh, yeah. I would have to be like a Buddhist to do this. There's no other way. Like, why are you putting them in a shoebox? Yeah. Take it outside. Well, Even if it's 20 trips, take it outside. Right. Well, so she's keeping them because she's feeding. <laughs> this is all so crazy. She's feeding them. She's feeding them fruit flies uh, because she's trying to find them new homes. I don't. Wow. I. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She said, um, I discovered that people really like praying mantises, and they are useful. They eat other bugs, and they are used for organic gardening to eat other pests, which is true. Not the yes, that yeah, but no. <laughs> yep, nope. I, I would just, not do that. I don't have the niceness or patience or the, oh my gosh, it's a bug. Like, my brain immediately goes to squash it, and mm-hmm. I still haven't yet managed to get to the, well, don't squash it, take it outside part. And she's like, not only, oh, don't squash it. Don't take it outside. Keep it and feed it while waiting to find it in another house. Never mind the fact that it's been nesting in my house for right. who knows how long. That's how kind she is. She's rehoming the prey mantises who, you know, were unwelcome in holiday guests. Uninvited, yes. Very uninvited. She had to carry that tree up there. That's terrible. Wow. Um, also, she said that the um, infestation has inspired her to get an artificial tree for next Christmas. Yes. yes. Definitely that, too. And bug spray the tree. Well, and, it, and I'm pretty sure that most Christmas trees do actually get sprayed. Usually, I Well, like the commercial like. ones. Maybe not like, you know, if your tree is organic or whatever. Or if she, like, cut it down herself. You know? Right, yeah. But, like, if you go to just a commercial Christmas tree lot that's there every year and doesn't pride themselves or advertise themselves on being, you know, organic or whatever, I'm pretty sure they spray those trees and yet still somehow enter egg nest of bug here. Oh, God. <sighs> that, was, that was part of why we got it. Because I didn't want an artificial tree. And then mm-hmm. the spider thing happened. And I was like, yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> Let's go look. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, um, just, you know, check, check before you buy. Or if you are a interbug egg nest here, hope that you get on a tree that goes to someone as kind as this lady, because you would not have made it through the holiday season at my house. Just saying. Nope. Nope. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you all so much for listening. And I hope you can tune in to the next Weird News episode. 